Welcome to another episode of The Flank here on Championship Sunday Live from Toronto. I'm joined by the executive producer, Mr. Ben Genesim. We got the one and only Christopher Duarte, a.k.a. Parasite over there. And then, of course, we got the one and only, the legend himself, Patrick Price, a.k.a. Aches. Welcome to another episode of The Flank. Man, gentlemen, what's going on? What a way to end the weekend. I don't think any of us saw the New York Subliners coming out and getting the W here today. I mean, what are your initial thoughts as, as we start to look into these new series? Uh -huh. What are your look at, initial thoughts, Ben? I think uh, we had a lot of 3-0s in this tournament, and it was looking like FaZe yeah. might run away with this one. Uh, and New York has something to say about it. You know, we've been critical of the inconsistency of this New York team since their major one win. They've been up and down. They get 3 0 one day, they 3 0 the next day. Not really sure what we're going to get from them. Something happened, and we've talked about maybe the team's mid-tournament, mid it kind of clicks. Uh, once the, the weekend started, they just went on a run. They beat a lot of teams. I know, Pat, you know, we'll list off some of the teams. I know, Pat, they're not your favorite teams. But I think it's massively typical that uh, New York came out here and dominated SND. SND wins championships, and yep. Hydra had an insane tournament. Got to tip that. He played unbelievable. I mean, Hydra definitely deserved the, the most valuable player, the MVP, which he did receive at the end of the tournament. But, yeah. Chris, what were you, What are your initial thoughts? Uh, I mean, we just got done actually watching it. So my stomach is in shambles because I think I was so stressed out for both teams in that final <laughs> because I feel like for the majority of the maps, such small situations could have gone either way, and it was just hard to watch, um, obviously, from a hindsight perspective. But, yeah, man, New York played incredible. Congratulations to Hydra. That guy is different. 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 <laughs> Pat, what are your initial thoughts? Somebody changed the script. Somebody changed it up. Somebody Pat? changed the script. What happened to the script? Minute, what man. happened? Listen, I had it. I had the script, but they changed it last minute. So, um, <laughs> also, I mean, Hydra was clearly, I think, the best player in the venue this weekend. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Um, but yeah, I mean, Faze losing all three S and Ds in the best of seven was not on my bingo card. But I think really, what's gonna what the, when they go back and look at this, that Asilo S and D is, is the five two. Come back that, yeah. was, that was unacceptable. We'll talk about it once we get to the series, but let's hop on into the first series of the day. We'll run through them, give our give a little thoughts on everything. Uh, first one was Atlanta phase against the Minnesota Rocker in the winners final. Take a look at the stats. Absolute snooze. You already hear from Pat. People were actually falling asleep in the front row. <laughs> Um, listen, man, Minnesota just got blended today. I just don't think they could keep up with FaZe. I just felt like Atlanta FaZe was a different ball game for them, and uh, they were just having a hard time keeping up, and especially in the slang department. Um, I mean, Pat, we'll let you kick it off, but what do you think happened with Rocker here against Atlanta? I mean, it was their first real test um, in, in reality. I mean, they played Florida and Boston. Uh, they barely got by Boston, right, and then they beat Florida. Um, to I me, mean, I mean, look at, look at the scoreboard. Yeah, too. I mean, I mean this team crazy. is not on phases level. They're not on really any of the top four, top five, top six teams level. Um, I think they just met a team that they can't they can't slay with. They don't play. They don't, you know they have no advantage in any mode. Um, really anything as a team. So yeah, um, I think they just kind of realized <laughs> that yeah. there's another level of competition from who they've been playing. One hundred percent. And phase handled them with ease. Uh, definitely kudos to, to Minnesota for, for getting top, uh, what did they get, top four, right? Or top three? Top they got four, top three. Top, top three. Top three. Top three. Third. They got top three. But, uh, ben, what are you thinking, man? What are you thinking? Well, I mean, these have matchups happen a couple of times this season, and they've been really close. I remember the major two uh, final uh, in Boston, like the major two uh, event, like that series went to a game five round 11. So I thought coming in today, uh, this would be like a really close series. And from the rip, like, it was just a blowout. The only chance that Rocker had was in that map one. They were getting some good breaks early on the hydro, but then FaZe really turned up on like P4, P5 and pulled away with it. And then from there, it was just, it was a disaster for Rocker. Everybody on the team got fried. No one, you know. Nobody played well. Nobody played well, so. Yeah, I mean, Chris, any thoughts on Atlanta taking down uh, the Minnesota Rocker? 3-0. Oh, series wasn't even close. It was a 25-minute like they, series. They, yeah. they, they were basically just padding their stats. Um, something interesting to say, though, I think every single day of the tournament, there was a team that spawned in and fell flat for the most part. Yeah. The first, like, two days, it was Optic. You know, they didn't win a single map. Saturday, it was Florida. They didn't win a single map. And Sunday, it was the Rocker. They didn't win a single map. Mm -hmm. So something was in the air, and people were shitting the sheets because everyone was getting 3 0 Yeah, agreed. I'm not sure what was going on this weekend. We saw the same thing in Boston, right? All yeah, the 3 0s and stuff yeah. like that. 
definitely a momentum base. I heard Chance talking about it on the desk, but just teams really riding off that momentum when they win that first map. That's why winning the first map is so big. But Minnesota, they end up getting bodied by Atlanta Faze. They get 3 0 in 25 minutes. And then we go over to the New York Subliners here in the Losers semifinal going up against Toronto Ultra. Take a look at the stats here. I mean, I. I'll start things off. I thought Toronto Ultra should have won this series. I thought they kind of threw this one away. This one went all the way down to a map five. It was a 3-2 finish. I thought there was about three rounds, maybe four, that Toronto have to close out mm -hmm. in that S&D. And New York, they're so resilient. They never give up. I think that's one thing you got to give them credit for. They deserve this tournament every step of the way. But in my opinion, I thought Toronto gave away rounds that they shouldn't have. And uh, I, you even saw the frustration coming from Scrap and, and some of the rest of the guys after they lost this one. But, Ben, we'll kick things off with you. I mean, this one goes all the way down to a map five where the New York subliners were able to get the dub and knock Toronto Ultra out of the tournament. Who's that? Jericho. I, I can't see shit. Um, <clears throat> Jericho's sad. Yeah, later. <clears throat> yeah, Jerrica's uh, Sims, Sims' wife is 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 trying to get uh, super drunk here. She's they're trying to get some drinks in. It's been a long day. Pat, we'll start with you since Ben is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. distracted here. What do you think happened here with uh, with Toronto? Uh, I mean, <sighs> it was just a, it was a neck and neck battle. But I really thought, like like you said, Tom, they could have won that game five. Those first two rounds that started out that Held was them. easily winnable. There was another late round there where they I think they completely choked. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, I mean, also Toronto not being able to win a hard point against this New York team was 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 interesting. But I mean, I thought they were the obviously the better control team. But I think they yeah. could have took both these S and Ds. So just a rough, I think, um, hard point series at a Kleenex. He had a ton of deaths in this one. Maybe he wasn't playing his life that much. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, New York clutched up in the end. It, I mean, Ben, it, it was crazy, right, to see New York come out and win two hard points against the Toronto Ultra. I, I don't it's think a lot not, of people it's expected not that. that. It's crazy. not that crazy. It's not that crazy, but we didn't expect it. Nobody expected uh, it. Toronto, Toronto, Toronto hasn't been that good at hard point this split. Yeah, Toronto this split was struggling in hard point, um, even though they had a good split. I thought uh, Toronto was like, record wise. I thought Toronto lost was like one control. I'm pretty they were. sure so they were the favorite. Yeah. Well, obviously, I don't know why they're acting. I'm not. Well, no one's saying that. I'm saying that seeing Toronto's weakness in hardpoint was one of the reasons why we were worried about them going into the tournament. Yep. They might not have exposed that um, early in the in the uh, was it in the tournament, but obviously towards the tail end, it came and bit, it bit them in the ass against a New York team. But also, New York played these guys in the first round, and it was basically the same story, um, but Toronto iced up in, in reverse, right? So. Yeah. Um, these two teams are, are obviously with New York playing at this level. These two teams are pretty evenly matched. And uh, I don't think that these guys could handle Hydra, bro. It's got a 1.39, 1.4 in the series, 11, almost fucking 1,200 damage. Yeah, that's insane. He had almost 12,000 12, damage. 12, that's 12, insane. 12,000 damage, yeah. The guy literally, it was everything in this match for them to squeak out tournaments. Dude, Hydra is, Hydra might actually be the best player in the game. Like, I, th <laughs> I, I think so. I mean, Here's my concern with Toronto, though, because I think we'll, we'll give a lot more New York gas throughout this, and I thought the Apocalypse was everything in this series. We're starting a dialogue about this Toronto Ultra team, and it's weird because I thought they'd been good at – they've lost, I think, and Chat can back me up. I'm pretty sure they only lost one control this entire stage, and they've been the best control team all season. But we're starting to see a slaying problem with them in hard point, and I love Toby. He's that guy when they won uh, early in the season, like he was automatic. Hixie was frying now. I, I mean, it's a dime a dozen – Seeing this team and the subs really struggling with the slang. I don't think Toby struggles has slaying, though. He just doesn't value his life. Bro, think about it. The, he, he the maps they won, there was like double yeah. 35 bombs. Like, they still yeah, slay. He's a super aggressive He just player. doesn't value his well, life I think the enough. other problem, too, is, I mean, Scrap didn't play horrific to split, but it wasn't the level of slang we saw online. It definitely decreased. He had a tough day one, and they were still able to grind it out. I'm a little concerned with Toronto, and I think they need to clean up is the hard point in the slang. I'm a, I'm a little concerned. And the game five ice for me is still a little bit iffy with this Toronto team. Yeah. I know we've talked about that. They're like last seven or eight hasn't been that great. Yes, a bunch of those online. A little worried because this Toronto team's going to have a tough LA Thieves matchup round one of champs. Yeah. Uh, their ability to ground out this series. Yeah, even looking at the stats here, like the narrative of them not, like Toby not being able to slice, he had basically three less kills than Scrap, who had the most kills on their team. He just had a ton more deaths. So, yeah, he's not playing his life very well. But also, <laughs> the one thing I wanted to say, even though um, they didn't, you know, get into that final, uh, Hixie had a good tournament. I think yeah. Hixie only really shit the bed against FaZe um, outside. Did they they played FaZe, right? Toronto? Yeah. Yeah, Toronto yeah, played That's okay. So, yeah, because I'm just... Long, 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 long weekend. Long weekend. Yeah, no, the games are, the matches are a blur. That's the sure. only team that he shit the bed. Outside of that, he had a lot of big maps for this team. He was keeping them in the series when... Uh, 
you know, some of his uh, superstar players are struggling. So He had a rough map five in this one, too, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I'm saying overall. Toronto Ultra, they end up falling to the New York Subliners. I know, Pat, you were talking about New York and just haven't really taken down the, the best teams, right? And I felt like that was a big win for just for the momentum, just to come back and, and yeah, win some of those rounds. They probably shouldn't have won. Just the clutch factor from them was impressive. Yeah, and when you look at their loser bracket run, I mean, they played basically all the teams that are out of champs, like the teams that are in Cancun already. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, obviously, Rocker clutched up this weekend and got in, but I mean... Again, when we look at this matchup, if you want to bring up these stats, Tom, yeah, like we'll move on to this the next was one. really similar this to how they played Phase, right? Like Phase yeah. vs. Rocker, it's the same thing. They just don't have the slang capability to keep up with these top teams. Like mm -hmm. this is a, this is a team where someone like Hydra or Pred or si uh, Simp or be like these guys are gonna bully them because they just don't have anyone that can keep up with them. So let me give you a stat, Pat. Rocker played four series on Championship Sunday so far this year, Major Two and Major Five. The only series of the four where they actually able to win maps was the game five, round 11, I talked about. Other than that, after they lost the game five, they got smoked by Thieves, and then today they didn't spawn in. I agree and, with and you. you know what happens on Sunday, right? You play the best team. The best team. So I'm a little concerned with this Rocker team. Maybe they can win one series of champs, but I, I agree with you, Pat. When we talk about the watch party, top six is probably... Yeah. That's the team's going to get. And, this, and, and, and looking at the bracket for champs, they're not going to get the bracket they got here, right? Yeah. They got, like, the best bracket because Optic got upset. They played Boston and, and, and Florida, Florida to get top three, and then they didn't win a map after that. So it's like, um, for me, this is a, obviously a top three, and you're happy with it if you're a rocker, but I think for us that understand how, how this works, this is a big ask. They're going to play well, this team again in winner's round one. I just looked it up, and we have the bracket for champs well, it's already. The same, it's the they're going to rematch. They're going to insta lose. Yeah, this is the close. same thing when rocker got, what they get? They got another top three earlier in the season, right? I was, the, the, they didn't get the top Boston three, major. but... Was was a, a, what was their placement at that tournament? They got, Fourth, th then they third? got third. They got third, right? They got third. And it was the same story. They basically oh, yeah, it was the Saturday well, cheese. It was where like, no, that Bant and Afro had the best tournaments yeah, but of the who, who, did they play? who did they play they in like those 1. matches? 1.5 twice. Yeah. Yeah. Who, did, who did they play in those matches? You guys remember? Uh, I, I can't. I'm actually curious like to see. We have to go back and look. Had to be. It had to be like you know, like a Seattle and like another like. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, listen. I, I, I mean, listen. Minnesota is also just like behind when it comes to these top teams because yeah. of their roster changes and just the stupid decisions they were making. That's true. You know, if they would have brought. They would have. First of all, fame is definitely an impact, but way more impactful on the sub. He Not looks even way more comfortable on the submachine gun. It's, uh, so it's it, you, you just go back to their roster change. You're like, you know, what were they thinking? If they would have done this a month ago. Maybe even earlier than a month ago, you know, they, they could have been a lot better than what we're seeing now. And, you know, they got a top three placing here. I definitely think with how their recent few events have gone and their few, like, last online, their last couple online stages have gone, I think they're happy with a top three. I mean, it's better yeah. than not making champs and, and falling course. out of champs. Yeah. It's just going to be hard for them. They're going to play They're going to play this exact team, New York, and runners around one of champs. They'll probably play Boston. I'm just going to play That's with That's winnable. Food. And then they'd have to play... Either phase New York, phase Seattle Ultra or Thieves to make it a top four. I I think top six, which I would tip considering this stuff, but they I agree they should have made these changes earlier. Bro, what is this? <laughs> what is this? A, what is this grand final stats? Yeah, and then we get into the grand final, and I mean, take a look at this. This one goes all the way down to a map number seven, and just take a look at the stats here. Everybody negative from the Shout New York Kismet, though. except for Paco. Kismet had a great event. That's he a hell. Crazy. That's a hell of a stat line. Oh like, yeah, he had that's a, six he had less kills than than Hydra. Obviously, way more deaths, but like, I mean, the way Kismet plays, that's expected. So yeah. Um, but he still, I mean, incredible. look at those two compared to the Priest and Skies. Like, yeah. those guys are putting on. I mean, yeah. this this series, I mean, I, I can't remember. I mean, we've seen best of sevens where FaZe has gone. Like, I, I remember, like, maybe the Rocker or sort of the Toronto series back in Cold War Online where they just got random controls. They've had series where, like, one game mode's been tough. Considering how good a FaZe has been to s d this season, how mid at times a respawn has, for that to completely flip in this series – where they looked automatic in controls. The controls are very comfortable. Hard points were split, and then they Wait, just got bodied on the SMBs. If, if you go back up, though, they outslayed the fuck out of yeah, them. Yeah, they did. They outslayed them back. It's because of the not, controls. Yeah, but still, even in the hard points, the slaying had to have been close. I, like, well, let's be let's be honest, right? Where FaZe lost this was in that 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 one, two, three, four, five. Bro, it's a that double a cheese. Dude, the like, L a Cilo S and D. Gets people Atlanta FaZe is up five two. They have to close it out. It's too many rounds. They even had a 4v2 after a BZ popped that yeah. two-piece one round. They lost that round as well. Just trolling too many rounds. They have to close out that map. I think the last four tournaments ended on an LSE low control, right? That's what you it were saying. It would have happened again. Which probably would have happened again if Atlanta phase closed out that map. But again... 
you got to give credit to New York. Uh, you heard Kismet talking about it on stage, but just adapting to FaZe and, and, and realizing how they're playing the map, um, how they're playing their situations, and, and just kind of adapting midway through, and they were able to win four rounds straight and bring that one back and, and take the round 11. So to me, that's where FaZe lost the tournament. It was in that map number five um, in the LSC Low Surge. But I thought FaZe had a good event. I thought FaZe looked really good. I know a lot of people have been talking about their hard point struggles, but I think they came here and, and, and showed everybody that, uh, you know, they could play in hard point. How many I, first, 13 first bloods? Yeah, a lot yeah, of first bloods. That makes sense why they won all three S&Ds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I thought FaZe showed out this weekend. I thought they looked really good. Um, I, they, I, they cleaned up their control. I mean, going in this they event, they cleaned up their hard point. The too. hard point was was looking good online. Obviously, they played like teams like London, so whatever. But the control was still looking a little bit iffy. Came in, they were automatic in control this entire weekend. This hurts, man, to, to throw those S and Ds like that. You know, one thing I just realized. I wanted to one thing though. I want to say something about New York in in S and D. I know Paco had like a million first bloods. The amount of confidence they were playing in those searches Insane. with their mid round decisions, like instantly just hitting stuff. The past New York teams. They would just get uh, just hold irons in situationals and play really slow. Like they were just running at phase, and I can't think of many, if not, if if not, any teams in the league other than say like Optic on times they played phase. I have the confidence to do that against them. Uh -huh. You, you want one thing that I've noticed? Um, phase also has Draw. an auto veto in search, although they like most like they've been pretty automatic in search for the majority of the year. Um, oh, no. Them, I think, having an auto veto in search against this uh, subliners team is probably not a good idea, especially with how good subliners is at hotel where they can't just avoid it it's going to be in the map pool and that map is fortress i don't think again i don't they don't play fortress search and destroy i don't really know uh what new york does or any other team but um them having an auto veto at least in in, in search is probably not a good idea going forward yeah in uh you know going into champs no i mean uh, the, the grand final what uh, go ahead ben if you have i mean to say i, I get what you're saying chris i think i think the thought process for them is they just don't like the 50 50 ness of Fortress. I just think now we're going to do a point, they play Mercado. I want to back you up, though, which is what I think I agree with you because they got to be willing to play Fortress SD when, like, it's just like New York's on this hotel SD hot streak. Like, they're just unplayable on that map. Like, you just got to kind of get another team's quality map and be able to just deal with the absolute bullshit, craps, roulette, whatever you want to call it on, on Fortress SD. Yeah, I mean that's all I'm saying. They they play Mercado, so that excuse is is not viable. I Somebody mean, just come and bang on the glass right there. Yeah, random. I, um, I was gonna say. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, I think the reason the reason why it's been fine so far is because I don't think any single team, um, besides maybe Old Vegas, was on the level of S and D that they were. So they can confidently just sit there, get rid of map, and know they're gonna win the rest. But if Subliners, you know, keeps up this S and D. Um, and even just in general, like FaZe have not, FaZe even this stage has been dropping searches to other teams. They're not that same, going to go 12-0. and 0. They're still going to be really good at search. But, um, yeah, just something to look forward uh, look forward to or anything they might want to improve on. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, huge congratulations to the New York Subliners. I thought they played incredible all weekend long. You could see their momentum building throughout the, throughout the event. And they're the only team to win two events this year. Um, so I think that's super impressive. I think that I says a lot about them. I don't think anyone expected that. No, no, no definitely not. I mean, early on, the thing is that they were they started so good, and then they kind of just gradually fell off a little bit, and then now they're back in their bullshit. Um, so I think it says a lot about their team, a lot about their coaching staff. And they had, some, they had a weird season with, like, the major two travel stuff. and Yeah, 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 I true. Just, but I, I respect the, the grind out from Rocker, and I think, do we all agree going in this event, Toronto, FaZe, Optic, New York, Thieves. Like, there are, I think, five teams that can legitimately win this event. Yeah. And I say that pretty clean. And so this might be one of the I most open champs. I don't think we were talking about in really New York that much, making it this far. No, I mean, we, we, we always said they were the fifth best team. And look, I mean, I'll be honest with you guys. I still think they're in that category. If it, the, the big thing for me is if Hydra performs like this, yeah, they can be, they can be anybody. Like, I mean – Thing is, I, think I think he can. I think he can perform. I, here's my thing. Here's consistently. my thing. He's I think, been like that all I year. I think Hydra's godlike. Don't get me wrong, but I I would argue that this event was an overperformance. I think he's disgusting. But like, Maybe. did you see those stat lines? Yeah, his stats are insane. Like that is ridiculous. But uh, as a sub, having a 1.4 every series, that's not gonna happen again. Bro, listen, the way Especially the way he plays, the way he plays is insane. The, yeah, no, he's fucking he, absurd. He, he's, he's probably got what, the nicest POV in God. The thing is, the thing is though, it's like, uh, I mean, look at that series they won, the grand finals. They deserved it. Him or shot, him or shot. They grinded it out. They they clutched up when they needed to. But realistically. Phase don't throw away a five two lead. This in, a, if you look two, at it, four two. It ends. Yeah. It ends in four two, right? And we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, 
I think this is the same story as their original major win. If you go back and look at their first major win, they clutched up a bunch of maps and rounds and search in like yeah. S and Ds and stuff like that. They were pretty automatic in the respawns back then, but they clutched up a lot. And but but that's just how tournaments go, right? Wow. Like usually the team that clutches up in the end is the one that wins it. There's very very rarely any mega dominant tournament wins nowadays. Um, and it's just happened to go New York some lines way. Do I think they can do it again at champs? Sure, but I think there's five, six other teams that can potentially do it. So oh, yeah. whether they do it or not. I but mean, but my big thing is subliners rely on Hydra being literally the best player in the venue by far to do it. Well, other yeah, teams it's very, don't. It's very That's the it's, difference. Yeah, but when, it, when has he had like a oh, like couple of rough series in a row? But you know, you're, you're, missing you're missing my it's point. You're missing my point, Ben. Not, like, the subliners as a team aren't as good as those other teams we named. I know. Hydra but, but Paco's, is just But best. Paco's been like, meeding the test, though. Like, I still feel Bro, it's the same thing with Surge in Seattle or Seattle Surge last year. Like, yeah, if Pred is by far the best player in the venue and World Stars, can the Surge win a map? Yeah, but the difference, is New, York, the difference is New York can definitely win. If they keep this S&D streak up, they can definitely win Surges. Surge last year couldn't do it. But it's not like they were dominating S&Ds. That's, that's the difference. They were clutch. In S and D, they dominated. The, they dominated the hotel and the Mercado. When you think about the one versus Toronto, they clutched that game five. That would have been Toronto win game five. That that Asilo, like they clutched. Like those yeah, are, was a, There's was also a the conversation. Back back. The other two, I thought. There's were also this conversation that I'm sure we're gonna have. We, you even said it. They're not getting fucking hotel search and destroy against like any team. No, that shit's yeah. gone now. That shit is gone. They're gonna have to get good at what Fortress is left over or Embassy. Um, or maybe I, even Mercado you know, now. Shit, they wanted everything. Yeah, Mercado's they're, they're another map that they're going to continue, continue to play. They're going to continue to ban Embassy. It's going to be Fortress or Mercado. Yeah, but yeah. The, the point I'm trying to make here is, and I feel like this is actually true to every team that's won a major, every team at the tournaments has that one map and mode that they get in every series until, like, Yeah, people don't pick up late. on it. They like, it makes no sense. It makes yeah. no sense. Like, I feel um, at the beginning of the year, it was, like, New York getting on, like, a hotel hard point or hotel control, right? Toronto, it was getting what was it? It was wasn't it hotel control? Like they just kept getting hotel control. Mm -hmm. what, um, what was it? Thieves. Thieves was getting what map was it that they were really automatic on? It might have been hotel as well. Getting, they got good at Celo control during that. that oh, Celo control. Year. Yeah, like Celo search. Phase a Celo search. A Celo <laughs> they search were getting it over and over when they were winning. A real swing yeah, this I, year. I, no bullshit. I feel like there's that one map and mode that teams, these top teams that keep, that keep winning tournaments, just get every series at tournaments, man. Yep. Well, let's take a look at the Call of Duty Championship, which will be held in Las Vegas. This is coming up in a, what, like two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have a couple weeks until we get to get to this. But take a look at these teams. We have Phase going up against Surge. We have Ultra versus Thieves. Optic versus Boston Breach and the New York Subliners going up against the Minnesota Rocker. Those are going to be your first round matchups. Wait, who's, <clears throat> where would like the bottom bracket fall? Are they going to play each other? So yeah. it'll it'll like so bottom side will losers will play each other. Ah, I hate that, bro. So here's the thing: is because people talk about easy side, hard side. It kind of like is all hard because if you're on the Optic New York side. Right, and let's say that you hypothetically, you know, lose early in this. Well, you're going to get, like, a easier round one matchup than losers, but then you're going to get a harder losers round two match. So I, I think most of these matches are pretty even. Last year we were, like, some of them weren't close, and all of them were game fives in winners round one last year. So I mean, day one's pretty clear cut, though. Don't you guys agree? No, I don't think so. How do you, how do you not think so? Because, because I think Ultra Thieves is a toss-up. I think FaZe beats Surge. I think Optic beats Breach. I think Subliners beat Rocker. And I don't really think those are I, questionable. I don't know. Boston's weird to me, dude. Like, here's the thing. His team's got two and a half weeks to prep for these matchups. Like, you just you got a lot of time to prepare. And, like, anything could happen, Pat. Yeah, you know, anything could happen. Do I it think, that Boston, that, do think that, that, that Boston again in a round cut. 11 game five is just going to sit in their spawn? I don't think Boston can get that to a round 11 happen, game five. I, I, people said that last year, and they did, and then they sat down like, and lost. I think there's like two, three matches that should be clear cut here, and not, nothing more though. Well, Which it's never that clear cut. Phase probably beat Surge, especially with how gar mega Garbanzo They're Surge horrible. is. They are horrible, bro. <laughs> yeah, but they got two weeks they to are get better. I don't care. They've had the whole they year to the get better, year, and yeah. they haven't got better. So these, that these ultras irrelevant. a toss up. I don't know who's gonna win that. These one. ultras a toss up if Thieves is playing well. And again, we that's optic, a really big okay, match. Uh, map map one, and I'm, one. And I'm and I'm not gonna sit here and like uh, say hypothetically, uh, but optic could come out and get O three, or hypothetically, Phase and Surge could play each other close like they normally. No. 
Optic should be Breach. If Optic don't be Breach, then... Then they got a bigger problem. They got bigger problems than the fucking bracket. And then Subliners yeah. should easily cruise through Rocker. These matches are all pretty straightforward. Does Boston even know that if they're subbing in someone else for champs yet? Like, uh, I guess we'll find out. But, I mean, I actually think... If I have to pick one match as an upset, I actually... I think that Rocker might be in New York, corners round one. Nah, with two weeks of two weeks of prep, see the stats. Two weeks of prep, I don't know. <laughs> what kind of forced crazy. hot take is that? Nah, well, I, I mean, obviously, Ben, I, I do think you make a good point though. That teams have a couple weeks to prep for these matches. You know, like I, I don't know if it's going to change much, but it'll change a little bit, especially in Search and Destroy. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know if I don't know if Rocker's going to be able to take the that New York. The only thing that you could say about that matchup is that. Sorry. Been smoking um, that Toronto. <laughs> New York starts <laughs> off. New, Toronto, New, York, New York usually starts out really Jesus. slow. New York does really start out slow in tournaments. We used to cook New York because they couldn't get out of losers round one or losers round two or something like that, where they just kept losing out that first round of winners and then just you know going out. But here they obviously managed to catch fire in the losers bracket. So I mean, if there is a match, it's they're going to lose. It's going to be early. It's going to be early in the tournament. Yeah. 100%. Well, listen, I'm really excited for the Call of Duty champs. I can't wait to get this on our way. Uh, I know, Ben, we're still working on getting a spot over there, down there in, in Vegas, getting a good spot so we can do everything again, uh, be live from, from the venue and do the shows and, and do what we do. But, guys, it was a long weekend here in Toronto. It was an amazing tournament, a lot of upsets, a lot of 3-0s, just a lot going on that I Whoa. don't think... 12 3 0s? Most ever. Jesus Christ. The most ever 3 0s. 12 3 0s, which is insane. I just feel like a lot of things happened that uh, just a lot of people didn't expect. But, uh, guys, to everybody who tuned in to the watch parties and all the shows this weekend, you guys are absolutely incredible. Just thank you guys so much for all the support and to everybody who's being positive. Huge shout out to you guys. Huge shout out to Eric and Oliver McQuaid for coming in with some big bombs to to end the show. Uh, you guys have been been amazing all weekend long. Tom, you hit fifteen thousand. Uh, yes, we J S sir. So like, we hit the fifteen K. Get a Woo Mafia spam in a chat. Huge, huge, huge shout out to everybody who came in and, and supported the streams this weekend, and everybody showing love on YouTube. You guys were absolutely insane. I think during the week we're gonna try and get like maybe an episode up, maybe do like a tier list or something before yeah, champs. Yeah, tier list video. Or um, some, yeah, tier list we'll, on community questions video. Yeah, I want, yeah, we'll, I want we'll to do, do some, a bracket since. Yeah, we, <laughs> and we, gotta, we, gotta, <laughs> we can we do so, a bracket. And tier we gotta list have a conversation about, about this questions. regular season MVP because I don't know who the fuck. If I had a vote, I don't know who the fuck I'd vote for. It doesn't yeah. count champs. No, I no. think you can't. I, oh, we're not. Oh, we're not counting champs. Well, it might we, be Paco. It has. Well, the thing is, if we're counting just the regular season, it has to be Paco because he's the only team that won two tournaments yeah. at the at, and the, he went at crazy. it. And he basically was going crazy the whole time. Yeah, like it just has to be him. Anyone else gets it? I think. Mm -hmm. I think the only person that you could argue um, is of that level is probably Abizi, just because he they obviously placed top four every single tournament, top three, whatever it was, and he's always been frying. So he's probably the only other argument that. But, you could but that have. is a good point, though. I mean, like. Do you do you do you count like two wins and then like a twelfth and an eighth and a sixth and an eighth, or do you count like third, first, third, second, third? Second, I you know personally I mean? count the wins more than anything because I think winning is the hardest thing in Call of Duty. I think placing consistently is not as difficult as actually getting over the hurdle of winning a tournament, in my opinion. Well, guys, we'll we'll get back to you guys. Obviously, during the week, just stay tuned. Make sure you guys are following and subscribing, and uh, you know we'll we'll get some more episodes up for you guys. But seriously, guys, huge shout out to everybody, man. It was a really long weekend, man. A lot of hours were put in over here, man. We've been here since Monday, setting everything up. So without all the energy in the chat, with all all the positivity in the in the comments and stuff. Uh, this would have been very difficult, so I appreciate everybody for, for helping us get through it. Thank you so much to everybody who tuned in. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sites are on. Go follow at the flank on Twitter. Gersh doing a phenomenal job at running socials per Pissing usual. Pissing off girlfriends. Pissing people off. Uh, starting drama that's giving me a fucking headache that I got to deal with. Uh, but it's all love. Shout out to Gary. Shout out to all you guys. Uh, and as always, man, take care. Brush your hair. And we'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Flank, man. Take it easy, guys. Take it easy. Peace.